Welcome to the celebration of today's Mass. Today's Mass is being offered for the intentions of Diane Agostini, for Courtney for surgery, for birthday blessings for Christy Ragubasing, in thanksgiving for Grisha, Dane, Jacob, and Noah Blanc, for Jackie and family, and for Anthony McCarthy. For the repose of the souls of Jerry, Dave Bihari, John Ramasar, Herman Udenberg. Please keep these intentions in your mass today. I will give thanks to thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing praises to thee among the nations. For thy steadfast love is into his kingdom with gratitude for his graces, his blessings, and his healing mercy. In addition to the, the petitions and the int intentions given to us, we keep in mind Robert Lesheris and his health, and the health too of Joel and Adana and their six children at this time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Coming together as God's family, let us call to mind our sins on this feast of St. Agnes, Virgin and Martyr. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who choose what is weak in the world to confound the strong, mercifully grant that we who celebrate the heavenly birthday of your martyr, Saint Agnes, may follow her constancy in the faith through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Take yourselves, brothers, at the time when you were called. How many of you were wise in the ordinary sense of the word? How many were influential people or came from noble families? No, it was to shame the wise that God chose what is foolish by human reckoning and to shame what is strong that he chose what is weak by human reckoning. Those whom the world think common and contemptible are the ones that God has chosen. Those who are nothing at all to show up those who are everything. The human race has nothing to boast about to God but you. God has made members of Christ Jesus and by God's doing, he has become our wisdom and our virtue and our holiness and our freedom. As scripture says, if anyone wants to boast, let him boast about the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. my love says the Lord whoever remains in me with me in him bears fruit in plenty Alle, alle. At the end of the gospel, please respond to it with that beautiful, resounding hallelujah once again. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus said to the crowds, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone has found. He hides it again, goes off happy, sells everything he owns and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he finds one of great value, he goes and sells everything he owns and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alle, alle, alle.
We want those women who've suffered the indignity of rape, molestation, interference with their dignity. We want their heirs from the other side of this world. We want their heirs to hear our rejoicing, not at the abuse that they suffered, but that with their patroness, St. Agnes, virgin and martyr, that their purity would be intact, that their witness through this terrible crime and hardship and suffering to their dignity, that their purity would be intact. St. Agnes, in art, she is portrayed holding a lamb and a palm branch. All martyrs are pictured with the palm branch of their martyrdom. St. Agnes holds the little lamb. Her, her name comes from the word for lamb, Agnus, as we, as we sing in the Lamb of God in Latin, Agnus Dei. So the word Agnes comes from the word for the lamb. Because, you see, even up to the tender age of 13, those who looked on her beauty, those who wanted to seduce her, those who did not respect her dignity and wanted even those who admired her wanted to marry her she would always say Jesus Christ is my only spouse and this would continue and continue and those who felt that they were rejected and turned away became so angry and insulted by her devotion to God and purity that they began to submit her name to the authorities that she was a Christian follower. And so she was to meet many, many a persecution until in the end, when they put her in chains, her lovely face shone with joy. And then she would be sent to a place of sin but there an angel protected her. She did not pay attention to those who begged her to save herself. I would offend my spouse, she said, if I were to try to please you. He chose me first and he shall have me. And then she bowed her head for them to cut off her head with a sword. There are many other legends and stories surrounding her. One of them is that when she was condemned to death, they condemned her to be dragged through the streets naked. And some versions of this legend state that Agnes's hair grew instantly to cover her entire body, and all the men who attempted to rape her were immediately struck blind. So today is the story of a young martyr, a young, brave woman. But I think it is also the story, I would like it to be the story of the conversion from pornography, from lust, from seduction. Here is a virgin martyr who is our patroness, patroness of any loss of our purity, any compromise of our purity. Yes, it's, it's a modern day scourge of humanity that we could be so exposed to the indignities shown us via the internet and the print media. Yes, all of that is possible. But what is more precious is the preservation of our purity and of our souls. So, if we have fallen to, to this particular pursuit of our soul by evil messengers of lust, of the indignity of the world, by now we should not be surprised that we could be exposed to such dangers.
but the feast of St. Agnes then, this little lamb of purity. She is the patroness of all the survivors and the victims of rape, of lust, the lust of others. Let it also be the feast of the patroness of all that we could suffer, all that we could be tempted. I'd like to think that if we are tempted severely, if we suffer any sexually addictive thoughts, if we do, it is very likely that the evil messengers that bring this onslaught, this attack, spiritual attack, very likely we have something more precious that is being threatened. It's a funny way to find out indirectly that we have something more precious. We hold a treasure within our souls. So in the face of attack, of spiritual attack, today's opening hymn of praise. Be exalted, O God. Sing hymns of praise. Look for psalms of praise. You see, by doing that, we would be diverting our gaze from the seduction, from the lust. We'd be diverting our gaze upwards where it matters most. And then we'll find the temptations moving away, ceasing. They have to flee in the face of praise. Let us stand and pray and bring all of our intentions before this God of ours who waits to hear our cries for deliverance, for freedom. So for all of the many intentions in this Mass that have been given to us, those for healing, those celebrating anniversaries, we beg through the intercession of St. Agnes, this Lamb of Purity, we beg that she take our prayers, our intercessions, to the heart of Jesus. Lord, hear us. For those others who, for whom we are praying, who have become lambs of suffering at this very time, we pray that the Lord would send angels around them, around their sick beds, around their deathbeds, to give them courage to hold on and to divert their gaze upwards to the one who can save them in Jesus. Lord, hear us. For those who have died and for whose souls we are praying, we pray that in the connection between heaven and earth and purgatory, that whatever sins they may have committed in this life may be lifted away by the same angels of mercy and that they could come closer to their Savior, Lord hear us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For our good and the good of all his holy church, we pray, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Agnes, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ who is our Lord. So with power, the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jason, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Jerry, Dave, John, and Herman, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Agnes, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Brothers and sisters, at this time, those right here in the chapel will receive Jesus sacramentally in Holy Communion. You're invited to join us and to make your own spiritual communion, to join your hearts with us, those of you who may be alone at home, or those of you who may be going through some kind of struggle in your life. Whatever it is, the Lord comes to you right now. He pours his healing love upon you and he beckons to you. Enter into this time and allow the Lord to minister to you his healing love. And as we pray, join me in prayer. My Jesus, I believe you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I now cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart as though you have already come i embrace you lord and i unite myself entirely to you never permit me to be separated from you O divine savior O jesus O blessed sacrament
Let us pray. O God, who bestowed on blessed Agnes a crown among the saints for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant, we pray, through the power of this sacrament, that bravely overcoming every evil, we may attain the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God Almighty bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. God's Spirit is in my heart. He has called me and set me apart. This is what I have to do. What I have to do. He sent me to give.